So we're starting with our bolster across under our seat. And when you lift up your mid section off of your sitting pattern, you wanna have a couple blankets behind you. We may as well kind of tuck them in a little so that when we take a twist, you have something to touch to. And then have a belt. So it's in a wide loop. This way you're going to be able to have kind of a double layer of um, hold onto the, and let's see, let's keep that kind of nearby. I have a little bit of um, offerings that I'm not exactly sure of the sequence particulars. I got a pretty good base, but we'll see how this flows. So you have a sandbag off to the side, one of those little grippy balls, if you like to use that for self-massage, which you can work through any time. But we'll start with our knees with their movement out. And you might kind of spend the moment ahead feeling how your legs kind of wave, the wavery motion of the leg of when the knees move out, what is the, what is the weight that moves your, your hips to this position? If you think of this as any hip kind of work at all. And then you put your block between your feet. We, we're not, I'm not going to say it is hip work at all. It's going to be kind of all up in the uh, what your what your uh, what the intentional layering is here today. With hip, so we've got a block between the feet, any width you want. Remember, the wider, the more stretch. But if I take my block wider, it also pulls in my back a little bit. So I will just go very narrow with my block. <clears throat> but I want you to take your belt, hold it over the top of you, so it might be above your head, it might be a little bit forward, it might be back, but be sensible on the movement of your belt so that you're producing a circulation kind of boost in your chest muscles. So if this belt feels like it's too small, like the, the double loop is not wide enough, well, certainly you could change that up, I suppose, right? You can make the tail on the belt a little bit longer and then work with that. Thank you, Dan. Not sure. Okay. So we have this work with the chest opening and the knees as they have that motion open. I want you to move your, your sitting bones so they have to be obviously centered down, but when you're lifting up out of the armpit chest, reach the right arm down and you still have the belt, right? So you're limited in how far you can go downwards with the right arm. But we're going to tip side to side. We're gonna tip our teapot here. So we're gonna lean side to side and feel the circulation in the arms. But clearly this is a pose that's beginning to emphasize the awareness in our back body. To be continued. So as you come back through the center, you're going to lift back up with the arms and bring the belt forward and go ahead and place it to the ground and set the feet apart. So the feet are at the very edge of your mat and you're gonna reach your hands down inside the feet, palms to the floor and let your spine waver down. And this block is kind of welcome actually. I can put my forehead onto the block, but feel your spine and that sensation of length from your base of your spine, not so much your sitting bones, but your spine loop all the way up into the brain stem, and then the weight of the brain lowering down. If the block is helpful so that you feel centered, if you like to have it so that you're releasing down your head, whether it touches anywhere or not, for some of us, that's a little more comfortable for our neck. And breathing, setting your intention to arrive into your breath and your back body. Feel the back ribs expand. And feel the centering pull downwards towards the earth. Now with that support of your arms kind of draping, 
you know, work on this kind of visualizing scheme of you're starting to develop this lengthening and kind of hydrating motion to your back, even if it's, you know, a little tricky to get uh, further with it, noticing how much you've kind of grown in your back space now. You're gonna lift up and you're gonna put a block forward flat and then gradually tuck the right foot in towards the bolster and placing the left foot on top of the block so that knee is in an open position. And we'll turn to our left, bring the right hand to that left knee or just above the knee and then get a feel of your waist and the waist movement around the corner. So you're twisting and you might find that you turn your head, you turn your gaze, or you turn and you close your eyes so that you can bear witness to the surface circulation. Okay, come back to center. I'm gonna give this one idea. So you can either come to a reach over to the top right corner of your mat on your block. Okay, so it's probably off the mat to stretch into this left hip or you can take the left leg, cross it over the right to the floor, and then bring that right hand or elbow to that left leg and take the twist one more time on this left side. So it's completely up to you. So finding which one might work for you in the moment. Feel the sensitivity of your waist and your back and go to the one that is obvious. You'll probably have a choice in your mind immediately what looks like the best delivery internally. Take a few moments here. This is just simply a preparation for the sequence when we lay it out. And now come back to arriving in center and then uncross, bring your feet together back to that Vadakanasana without the block between. And then get a feel here when you reach your hands, interlace your fingers, push the palms, scoop and lift up and feel if you can let your pelvic basin, actually your breath is in that pelvic basin, tip a little forward, you're still on the bolster. And so you're somewhere between a little bit of a forward motion and an upward motion with your arms, but it's certainly not convincingly in one or the other direction, it's in between. It's in limbo, okay? In limbo with your limbs. Okay, reach the arms open. See if you can kind of excite the chest muscles, but not pull on anything. So you're working your musculature to move back and then switch the leg part on the block. So you're tucking that left foot in towards the bolster and you're turning to the right. So you're working the sheaths along the spine, but also the, the column that is connecting to your ribs. I mean, this whole core chamber. So as the movement arrives to the right, twisting, feel that intra-abdominal kind of squeeze and let your abdominal muscles go to neutral. So they're not either convinced to squeeze in or dump out. They're holding space to keep you up, I hope. Okay, get that final direction of twisting for you on this side, breathing and then come back towards the center. And there's some of us that are gonna go with taking our block to the top or the over to the left side and leaning down to provide that circulation in the right hip. And there's some of us that are going to cross the right foot over the left leg. So it's right to the center or the lower center of the, the left upper part of the leg. And then when you hook that, you might feel this right leg working just like you would here, right? Similar, not exactly, but it has a similar portion of the leg that is kind of cut and dissected into this awareness. And then when you twist, for those that are twisting, those that are twisting, I want you to convey focus through the spinal column. So it's almost like you have a little bit more of that. The, the spine is a pointer up to the brain when you twist. Right, so you feel that rotation from the spine. And to those of us that are in this hip opener, we might move our left knee farther open just a little bit 
So there's a broadness to the pelvis. And let the moment here be that you're sinking down for those in the hip opener. They're both considered hip openers. Provide another breath. And then letting it go. And see if you can kind of come out of that shape you're in, but come out so that when you uncross to the legs, we scoot the seat forward and we'll take the block and place it right next to the bolster across horizontal. So I just place it kind of looking down. There's my block and there's my bolster behind it. And then I'm gonna sit on the block. So I sit all the way forward on the block so there's a lot of height to help my back out. And then as I lean my spine back, I'm gonna lower down and take the care so that my upper rib spatially slides back and I have this blanket stack just in case. Some of us might take one blanket off and have a little bit more of a release in the chest, which is helpful, right? You'll be able to have that opening. But let's get a few moments here to center a sandbag on the appropriate desired area to improve circulation. So it might be your frontal hip bones, it might be your rib circuitry, right? So the whole circuitry of the ribs. But as you extend your legs down, check out that you got your belt nearby. And then making those moments of filtering the legs so that they feel like they're in a column. Now, if the column is feeling harsh in your back, you'll take your feet a little wider. And maybe your feet will turn out for this one. So it's kind of an opening shavasana, even though it's a several minutes into the session. So make that choice with the sand. What feels better in quality for your back circulation? And if it's to remove any other props, that's okay. If you wanna lie back and then have a sandbag on with or without your bolster and block. Okay, and then getting your belt and we'll direct that circulation into our upper, the vibrancy in your breathing muscles, right? And so the attention to moving my belt with this wide loop, holding it so it has a little double, um, so support, I'm gonna hold it overhead, but I'm gonna let that belt rest down so my awareness is in gripping onto the belt and just feeling the elbows open. And this one can take time to develop a good relationship with the belt, supporting your breathing, right? So if I'm holding on, I also want to work with releasing that whole load internally, the CO2. So I'm focusing on the in-breath, the oxygenation, the belly relation, right? When you oxygenate, it lifts. And then as you exhale, you enter that stage of letting go. So what your choice has been for your props is entirely up to you. Sand and no sand, bolster and block or not. I would encourage you to try to have a belt overhead, however intense you wanna make that stretch with your chest and find something that's you know, 10% less than the most intense so that you can release. Yeah, turning on the circulation for the front valves of the body, the respiratory essentials. That could be the, the first portion from here to for about 15 minutes. It's kind of respiratory essentials that we're working with. And now if your feet are turning out, see if you can find a way to be accepting of that or how your legs order themselves around. And you might find that if your sand is on your hips, that if you kind of guide the feet a little closer in, even if you propose the position of the toes angling a little bit inwards, your thicker muscle bands might 
adapt to that comfortably. So see what occurs for you to kind of sneak in some responsibility with your, your posturing. And we'll take a few more moments with the in-breath for four to five counts and the out-breath for five to six. Anytime you need to remove a prop or bend your knees, you go for it. If it feels difficult and you're working through some issues in the tissues, you might need to bend your knees right here and then feel, oh, that's a relief immediately. It takes awareness of your particulars to, to adapt this practice for yourself. Okay, now we're going to shift our hold on the belt for a moment. We're going to be using this belt for moving our knee in towards our chest. So I want you to have it still in that exact placement. But move your sand aside and slide the feet in so the knees point up. You can do this with or without the bolster under you, right? This whole sequencing right now. So I kind of feel when the knees bend that my, my low back waist kind of gives in a little bit. I have a little bit more weight there to open up my back. So as you bring your, so as, so as you, so as your, your psoas muscle activates, the right leg tucks in. And if you can move your belt and your arms holding that belt towards that leg, I want you to get a feel of that direction. You don't have to touch the leg with the belt. The key is the movement cycle in the back. So alternate the leg, drawing in, switch the sides, but get that feel of your back waist and also the hands a little wider than shoulder width on the belt and working the circulation for your back and the, the back of the hip. So there's nothing wrong with exploring a little bit. If your knee goes in and you kind of want to wave the knee a little side to side, notice what that feels like in your attachment, the leg attachment. But give it just a couple more times. So this is getting some circulation buildup. So as I lower my belt back, we're going to, Start to shift out of this. So you're gonna shift your knees over to one side and then move the block away. Put it overhead so you've got one behind you. And then roll your body weight. In fact, since your seat is off the floor and you have your feet pushing down, you might let your knees swivel side to side and then feel if there's some vulnerability in your hip flexors. Noticing, right, this, this rich movement in the, the sides of the torso. And then when you swing the knees over to the left side, you're going to shift your weight so you're attached to that bolster. And you're also gonna take your blanket stack. So I have one less than I need right now. So if you have towels or a blanket stack, you're gonna add that so it's pretty high up next to your bolster, right? So it's, you got a space for an arm, not much more. A little bit more than an arm space is fine. But you'll need enough space so when you lower down your head, right, it feels supported, okay? So the things I'm gonna do to set up for this is to put a ball or a block on the inside of the right leg and also to get my sand on the side. Now, optional sand, no requirement. Maybe it works great for you to have it. And even if you get that sand attached, you might find that it can be lower to the hip for some. For some, they like it a little bit higher. Um, but as that right arm stretches over and places the block in a line of energy so that the arm above feels like it has a resting spot. Right? So it might need to be high for you, the, the block. You might need to move it to an appropriate lift. Even if it's on the, high, the highest height, it can be grounded. And it can feel kind of nice because there's this link from the armpit chest 
down to the ribs. So sort out your focus. If you like to get in kind of the side sage heap and not spend energy on the details, that's completely fine. It's a practice to absorb. So sometimes it's nice to just flow in and reside in the pose for a while. So let's enter the side sage. Arm could be overhead, it could be out in the air, opening the chest, and it could also be resting to the left arm or on your side. So finding the ribs without touching the ribs with your hands, feeling your breath discover Right, that rib cage. Yeah, it might feel like a blob of ribs, but there are so many of them that you likely are attending to most of them at the same time when you're slowly breathing. Conscious control and release. The CCNRs of good breathing. Resting your eyes and brain. A few more moments. We all take a different choice with our props for the side work. So knowing that you're not limited to this option, some of you might decide to have your bolster completely under that left arm lengthwise. So take what works. But feeling the one side that you're focusing on lengthwise for the right arm, that ray down into the rib and the right hip. Okay. Now, as that right arm has motion, it's the one thing that gets you to mo get momentum out is that upper arm. So feel if you can attempt to get the chest to radiate a little to the right. So you're spacing the chest musculature out. This is clearly helpful in the lungs, the lung, um, in the lung force, the strength. So we're, we're working on things that, that resemble back bends, right? When we do other poses to, to recruit those breathing muscles. Now, when they get into recovery mode, what we're going to do is some cat-cow work. So as we move the sand, and we likely will move ourselves to all fours, you might get into that medley of motion by scooping your right knee to the left, kind of huddle up, and then turn. This is a twist on its own to get here, but can you get a feel of the turn and then the hands down. If you want a blankie under your knees, just take one. It's no big deal. It's just a blanket. Drop it and lift your knees on top of it. And as your hands are forward on the firm ground, you're going to let the spine wave back and towards the floor. So it's a tuck and then it's an arch. Okay. So feel where the momentum is in your back all the way through the weave of the shoulders. And you might wag your tail just a little bit to feel where there is some spots in your back that can get some more space. Okay, and let's take just a couple more cat cows. Just a very simple layer of moving our back. You might find the inhale is pretty quiet and the exhale as you round your back is a little bit more vocal. But the last motion when you create that arch, I want you to feel coming back to neutral and bring the knees to touching and lift up the right leg. And as it stretches back behind you, if you got some space behind you to move your leg, get a feel of the circulation in your spine and then lower that right knee and feel that it kind of tucks to touch the bolster. So your chin scoops in and then lower the knee to the blanket and switch the left leg back and up. Feel that heel push back. So you're strengthening in your upper body 
in your core bones. And then when you get that sense of moving your left knee in, you're going to try to use your back and your stomach circulation in tandem to scoop the knee towards your forehead, okay? Now, as you lower down that left knee, we're gonna to change to side stage on the right hip. So you might be moving your props a little bit and shifting, maybe you'll lose your objects. <laughs> so you're shifting to your right hip and keep the block overhead. Don't, don't spend energy, any energy on moving too many props around, just the necessary items. But when you lean to your right hip, keep in mind that these all these poses have some very similar layers, right? They look different than when we started, but they're all similar knee patterns. So when I move to my right side, and I get a feel if I'm gonna soak this left side into the sensation, I'm going to adapt my waist into the bolster. And if you have back sensitivity, I imagine these side poses will feel really good. So give them a try. If you need some more bulk under your head, a little more height, you can tuck one of the blankets up, roll it so it's higher. But perhaps this block overhead higher up than you were using before might be an advantage to this upper back space to bring some strength there. So as you arrive, finding a centering experience for the body on the props, and then come into the pose, take the pose, and making that spacious interaction with your breath, internalize the posture. So if there's any grippiness in your neck or your shoulder, then you will likely change the upper arm, whether it stretches open. Even if you're letting that stay in air with stillness, you'll find that your body still kind of ripples open. Breathing steady. Feel the slowness of the inhale. And then consider the expansiveness of the rib cage when you're inhaling. And give that a try. Expansiveness of the rib cage when you're breathing in. And that upper arm doesn't have to be touching anything. Focus on how the sensitivity is in your side. This is a side sage pose. So it should feel like there's some side work going on, some layers, even into your left hip. Okay, give it a few more moments. Okay, doing the work of starting to move that left arm off of the block. And perhaps if your arm is already down, you might flow it up and open. You might flow it over head, like you're trying to reach far, far away. And then you access this length in your center. And we'll let that accumulation help us when we get our legs upside down, okay? So what we've prepared for is, it's, it's been in preparation this last five or 10 minutes to get there. So now that your ribs have some little bit of openness, let's not give them like 100% that they are finally, maybe in a half hour, there'll be a little more than that, but slide your sand away. And then when you scoop your body over to the left or the right, sorry, it's like, um, you know, when you, you close your arms, like you're hugging, you have this kind of already mobility in your shoulder blades to get there. Most of us have done enough of that at some point that we understand that operating motion. But I think this movement, that's a little bit more like infant movement work. Um, it takes time to re, re to discover it again. So, Really let your knees scoot back in, 
And then when you scoop to come up, if you have your ball in the front, kind of move it aside and move your bolster so that you're going to lift up on it and then roll back on your back. So I want you to have the blanket. If you have back sensitivity, you might do legs up actually with your two blankets like this today. So you might go with this and lie back on that. If you don't have a lot of back sensitivity, you'll have your blanket. So it's across the back like so. It's just gonna be for the brain. So let's find our position so that, I know I'm still kind of on my right hip, trying to observe the, the rules of this one. So when I come up, I'm trying to go back to that roll down. So I'm rolling onto my back and then lifting up my legs. And so now instead of my ribs having all the bulk under them, it's my pelvis. And you know, if there is some sensitive layers in your back and you don't wanna use the full bolster to lift up your pelvis, you can use a flat blanket. Some little bit of height might be better for some of us, right? Not necessarily all of it. So as we mature, right, we're gonna find the mature in the practice that is. I know every minute in this practice, you're, you're getting a little bit more mature. <laughs> so have the feet up and let the legs have either a little bit of a tantrum or a circle of feet, or let the legs have a little bit of waving room so they're not in a disciplined position, right? They can kind of move so that you can feel that the lift of the legs actually provides your back, your spine with a grounding and supportive balance. It's like when you're standing during the day, your balance in your bones is downward pull with gravity. So this is the opposite. So get a sandbag. So if you can find a way to get upside down and feel pretty comfortable with it from time to time, it might be overall a good thing, right? For bone density, but also for um, your posture. So as you bend your knees, you can scoop up whatever sand weight you have, whether it's sand or rice bag. And then when your feet are separated on that sandbag a little bit, you're going to work on that lift up and that feel of lifting up the, the correct way for you will likely be that you can feel the back muscles of the legs in at least a mild operating musculature of pushing up and then feel when the feet flex. So the sand just loads on the feet and then it starts to load into your calves. Okay. Now the ribs have this nice spatial balance, little bit of surface, surfacing with the bolster under the pelvis. So move your arms so that you might take a belt again, right, and kind of access this, this rib circulation. One thing I like to do with the belt with arms on this one is I'll make the loop so it's a little more generous in shoulder width. So it is a little wider than that for me. And as the hands scoop into the, the loop, Right, so I have my belt connected. As long as my feet feel balanced, I can do other things. And there won't be any magic tricks here. So as you move your arms back behind you, you wanna feel that setting of your shoulders. And with that motion of the arms, there's still movement. And then you'll find a still point where the arms might touch to the blanket. You can feel that touch down and then Concern your focus with the, the accurate circulation of trying to move your shoulder blades down your back, especially when your arms are lifting. So it's the, the old school routine of arms overhead, straight up at attention and shoulders down the back. But when you're on your back, it's almost a little bit more settling than standing. So access the breathing at the belly, you don't have to do the arm position right now. If you prefer not to, then don't. And go to perhaps the cactus position, elbows open, hands back. You can always wriggle out of the belt in a few moments and get to cactus. And we can 
feel what work that does, even if it's so subtle you didn't notice a thing, it's likely still settling for balance and accuracy or inaccuracy, I'm not sure, huh? B, find the stillness with the leg position and the belly motion. Expand and contract. Feel if you can make contraction of the core uh, smooth muscular movement, right? So it's smooth muscle that's contracting. So it's not a, a tense grip, but the muscles do guide back to the floor, the stomach. A few more moments. If it gets really shaky and jittery for you, you can always, A, if you have sand, move it away. You can put the belt around your feet so that you feel a little bit more supported. Okay, so get the feel when the feet are motioning a little bit forwards. So you are strengthening your lower belly. Only do what feels okay. If it feels uncomfortable in any area, doesn't feel good, don't do it. Okay, now my elbows are sneaking open on this now. They don't like to stay straight. They're sneaking out. So part of that is a you know lack of musculature definition in some parts of the back, right? It likes to go the the lazy, the lazy line back, right? So work on, you know, just engaging that reach in time. It will enhance some of those muscles to help your posture. And then we slide the hands out of the, the belt completely. But now what I want you to work with is bending through the legs and getting the sand to the back of your thigh. So this is a, it's a <clears throat> upward facing forward bend, right? Instead of standing and leaning your head down, it's on your back. So the knees bending is, is not necessarily the, the full deal. It would be my legs are lifting and moving a little bit back. But give it a moment to what feels really com comfortable for your condition. Maybe your knees do like to bend. We don't have to follow the textbook, every little inch of it. But with that squeeze, it's clearly also squeezing into my abdominal organs. They get this little bit of massage from the leg squeezing in. You don't have to add your hands to that, that squeezing supply system, but get a feel of the legs in that position to bridge you to where we're going, which might be hint, hint, some bridge work. You know, slide the sand aside and let's put that leg so that they have a block or a ball between them. It's probably whatever is convenient for you right now, isn't it? It's, if you don't have a ball nearby, you're going to use a block, whatever you got. So you place that between the knees and something high enough on the inner leg towards the knee so you can actually grip into it. And then let the knees swish from right to left. So when they go side to side, there's a spacing in your back. Great. So it, it's easy peasy, right? It's not a big swish in your hip yet. But notice when you go to the side, any of them, any of the two, that the, there's a little lift in your back, in that side of the back, into the hip. So open out the arm. So there is this sense of expanding. And the, the place I like to work with, with expansion and feel like it's important for us is the connecting layer from the ribs to the side waist, right? This whole little side layer that connects into the liver or the spleen, whichever side you're pointing to, to the circulation into the organs, the blood flow. So feel that you go side to side, but you're not overly pushing it. So there's not strain in your back. Find what's about 5% under your that when you go towards strain, so a little less 
is best. A little less is best. And now as you bring your knees into the center, be sure you're holding onto the object with your leg muscles. And then hands on the bolster, if you're using that. Knees are gonna squeeze into the chest, so watch out for the, the block on your face. Don't make too much of a deep imprint. And then push the bolster. And as you push it forwards, you're gonna motion so that your feet touch to it. And now this is where you might decide if you have that ball, you might choose that over the block. Up to you. I'm gonna swap out. I figured out where the ball was. Okay, knew it was hiding somewhere. All right, so if you have whatever you got between your knees is fine. But when you squeeze into that object, you wanna find that if ideally you have a responsive structure there, so the ball is great, for, so it's responsive, right? You can actually feel as your legs adapt to that. If it's a block, there's some positives too, right? It's very firm. You're not able to probably change its um, dynamics. Now, when you push into your feet on the, bol the bolster, you're gonna scoop up, but I want you to scoop up so that it's like your body weight moves back and moves into your back versus forward, okay? So as you lift up your hips, I want you to feel more of that body weight back. This is really hard to convey on a Zoom, I think, versus when you're live with people, but do what you can with this foot push and the weight goes back into your shoulders and it doesn't work if your feet are not on a bolster. That will not do any good, right, on the floor. So this height of the bolster or if you have like a chair seat is really good, but your chair has to be next to a wall so it doesn't slide away. But if you lift up your hips, you can feel the load in your lungs. At least I sound like I can feel my lungs. Okay, so place your arms down, down by the sides of you low and bring your palms open. And then lift up your hands so that your elbows are by your sides like robot arms. And then let the load go down the spine into the back of your pelvis, slowly eventually gets there as your spine touches down. Okay, so take a little break here. Just get a feel of your spine center, maybe wag your tail. Feel all these funky dynamics, something between the knees, your arms are like little robots. Okay, so we're gonna do draw bridge about six times approximately. But I want you to feel the focus point when you lift up that the weight moves back to your shoulders. And then when you slide down the spine, it moves down to your pelvis. I know that's like elementary brain for this, but it seems an observation now that I'm able to, you know, observe a little bit sometimes on here when I'm live in person, that it's not always met that, that actual base uh, thing I want you to try to meet. So when you lift up your hips right now, I want you to feel your arms go overhead so you can actually get the weight back in your shoulders. And then as you lower down your spine, your arms go forward and you lengthen through the spine. If you're kind of grinning like that's really easy, okay, fine. Um, try doing that, right? Find easy and embody it, right? It's like you're embodying the practice. Feel that circulation scoop through your spine. Continue on lifting and lowering. And notice that the lift can include squeezing the ball a little bit or not. I've chosen not to focus purposely on squeezing it right now. I'm using that ball to keep my back open and balanced the muscles in my legs and my hips, the glutes. I don't know if people really think of that as a hip muscle. That would be an interesting topic. Like it's so connected, but yeah. So we're really thinking kind of mid glute here. We're squeezing back, we're wrapping around the buttock muscles. And the next few times that you flow down the final process, feel your knees scoop into your chest after you lower all the way through the spine, I hope. And then when you put your feet back on the bolster, then do the lift up. Let the arms reach back as much as they want to be dynamic, it's up to you. 
and then slide down the spine and bring your knees in. And you can hold the back of the legs if that feels best. If you don't hold the back of the legs, it might feel like a little bit of core strength. So we're doing just a couple more before I get too carried away with draw bridges. Okay. Put this as a little memory uh, card in your brain, this cycle of movement. This is important. I don't know how we're gonna compare this in cat, cow and up dog and reaching back to child, but we'll try it soon. So next time you bring your knees in towards your chest, you're gonna remove the object between them and then set the feet together on the bolster and the knees out, okay? So we can give this a name. Of course, I spend enough time naming poses, but feel the connection of your feet. And then does that connect into your, each leg as far as each hip, or do you feel it's kind of a conglomerate, right? Out of the pelvis, the, the, the bone structure right into the front of the hip bone, and then that whole slope into the, the belly, the soft belly. So what I want you to focus on right now is feeling your feet push together. Should be pretty vibrant. Okay. Now get a belt somewhere that is around you, you can find it. Okay, get your belt. Let's see how we're gonna do this. I would love to do this very specifically. So I want you to take your belt. Um, you're gonna likely need to unbuckle it to get it wrapped around your rib cage unless you somehow have special um, magic trick in, in, in your repertoire here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my knees open for right now. Try to do that. Maybe lift them up to get my hips up. But I'm gonna move my belt up around my ribs and then place it in a loop so it's connected. Okay, so I got my belt around my ribs, so I've got my loop. You're gonna loosen it up, I hope. Old belts are great because they're so easy to move around. If you get a new one, they're kind of difficult. I'm trying to break in a new one, but I went back to my old one. <laughs> okay. So bring your knees to point up and then feel your back ease, like you're pushing your feet in your bolster to ease your back. Oh, that feels good. Now lift up your right foot into the loop and then you'll take your right leg up. And I want you to scoot that belt so it really is felt on your rib cage. Like you can feel that belt is holding your, your ribs, it's holding your leg really. Okay. Now, as that left leg relaxes down, I want you to let the left, actually the left foot is on the bolster still. The left knee is gonna open out. So you're still in that half cobbler's pose. And you're gonna cross the right leg over to the left. Oh. Yeah, and so this rib cage has to center and all that bridge pose work you've been working through will likely come in helpful here for the circulation. Open the right arm out. If there's stuff in the way, do the best that you can to feel like it opens. And roll your brain to the right so your neck is getting a very neutral stretch. And your arms get to be wherever they're relaxed. Let the focus be really fueled in your right hip. So it's like you're using your props to jinx things up so that you're very specifically circulating, getting a dose in your hip. You're getting a hip dose. So let that blood flow into that hip. Take the pose. Breathing. Now try bending your right knee, even though the leg is still crossed over the waist to the left. Bend the knee and feel if your brain is still turning to the right and the rib cage, right knee, is slanted to the left most likely. Okay, now as you start to push that foot into the belt, so it's pushing left, 
push it across to the left. Your belt is going to, the foot is going to the left and it's pushing with the resistance of the belt. Now, push to lift up. And I know the leg selection might be a little kind of intense here. Push the foot straight up and then create that balance into your whole leg, into the lower leg, it gets into the calf. You can certainly grasp onto the belt and tug on it. If you feel fierce like doing that kind of thing, that's okay. Um, but you might work with what you've got right here, even if it's not the most intensive position for your leg, it's still pretty good. Part of this is observing um, how we create balance with some props and not so much force, right, with our muscles. So try to let your muscles kind of release. It's not so easy. <laughs> And then bring the left knee back in and take that left foot up into the belt and switch over. I think this is getting conveyed, okay? So the right knee is open. It's on the, the right foot is on the bolster. And then I'm taking my time. The, the challenge might be that you wanna kind of use your arms to do uh, supportive maneuvering, which is what you might have to do. You might have to move your belt and your waist of course, you might need to use your hands, but feel if you can get to a point where you really are letting gravity have you and using the belt as a support. Yeah, feel that crossover in the hip. Be sure that you have enough space to that right side. So if you need to kind of maneuver in your spacing with your whatever's around you, that might block your movement, try to move so that you can improve that. The belt really has like this fine line. If it gets right into your ribs and the softer tissues, uh, it doesn't do the pose at all. It does the crossover. So it's like this real fine line of the ribs. And I'm encouraging you to, to filter in the movement of the rib cage in this event, this hip event. Okay, feel your arms open, feel your head turn left. Give it a few more moments. Even if you're right up against a wall space or you're, you're kind of close to feeling confined, see if you can stay internal around the hub of the hip, the hip hub. And then as you move your left foot up, push into the belt. Push straight up. Okay. So once you lift up through that left leg, um, you might be completely fine with how your belt is on your ribs. It might be a little bit low. So you want to find that you're secure and supporting your back. And that right leg, we're going to be switching that around in a moment. So if that knee is flushed open and you're feeling your hip kind of loosen, what will be kind of interesting in this sequencing today is this right knee open right now, unless you changed it. Um, so it's that inner track of the leg, right? You can feel that. But also notice what occurs in the back of the pelvis, the track of the back of the knee, um, the whole back range on that right back hip. Okay, so let's be sensitive to the, the leg range right now. So our left leg is kind of circulating the most. So I want you to hold the belt with both hands and then pull and bend through the left knee, okay, of course. And then feel how significant you can bend that left leg and then slide the belt off your foot and then feel when that left knee you can put your belt overhead so it's not distracting as much. Feel how that left leg draws in. Okay, keep it real simple here. And then we're going to move our right knee to point up and then put the left foot to that right knee. This is so classic and simple. I know you've done this many times, but when you move your legs in towards your body, the hooked leg, so we're in figure four pose, reclining pigeon, left foot to the right knee, hold the back of the right thigh, 
and let the spine lengthen. Now, even if you can get your hands like below the right knee, I want you to try to hold it where it's more elementary at the back of the leg so that it gives a message to your back to lengthen on that right side of the back. And the left hip might be in a little bit of a conundrum here. Okay. So with a few more moments, feel that tuck and drawing the legs in. We're gonna move our right foot down and then uncross and push your bolster, maybe with your left foot over to the right side of your mat. And we have that leg set up. So this left leg is getting three poses back to back, right? So I would like it if you could let your right leg completely be at ease, let it go down, relax it, and then cross the left leg completely over to the bolster. And if this bolster isn't high enough for your leg and it's a little jittery, you're gonna add a blanket on top of the bolster, okay? So if that's the case, add a blanket, if that's not um, something you want to try to strive to find and get there, you could do other things like put a block under your knee. Uh, I don't think the ball is going to be that helpful actually, but a block could work because it's clearly a defined shape um, or a towel or blanket. And then add the sand and the ball. So for most of us, we will use some weight on the exterior leg, not always, some days no need. Um, and maybe if you have a ball, you can nudge that into the sacrum. And this might be a complete, nice completion to what we're doing right now with our hips and our low back. So we're kind of going to that final, not, we're not right at the final spinal right now, but we are going through the fullness of the hip. So feel that openness of the left arm. We've been doing this arm gesture for a little time. And you might have both arms open, but provide the motion of awareness in your left hip and the sides of the back. Head could turn left, it could be centered facing up to belly breathing. Okay, so we want to get to both of these sides and have plenty of uh, energy when we cycle up. But when you do find this left leg adapting, if it gets tingly, you know you've gone too far with it, like numbness, you know, losing sensation is not the goal. We're not going for numbness in the, in the body out of the practice. So if you start to get a little tingly, it's generally too much. You lose feeling too much. It's knocked out your nerves. It's a nerve knockout. So get the feel if your leg is high up over to the right, even though my leg may not look at the zone like it's hyped up, I feel like it's a little much. So you might slide the knee down. Keep in mind if it's a little much and it's causing you some trigger of tension in your mind, no matter how it looks, it, if it feels that way, reset it a little bit so that you can get your nervous system to attach to softening the leg go. That's kind of the basic. And the sandbag can be adding to the intensity. Sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's too much, but it's necessary for many of us so we're grounded in it. That's why you use that, okay? Okay, now when we shift, I want you to let the leg patterns go back to knees to chest. So we'll take off the sand and the ball. And you'll be very simple with scooping in the knees and move them in towards the chest. Even if you get kind of off your mat and you get a little, feel a little sloppy with it, just really focus on the energy of that ease in your back complex. So rocking can be therapeutic. 
doing a little side to side tilting from the sacrum, some left to left. And if I go from left to right and shift, and then come back into what's both sides in the middle, we're gonna take the bolster and we can move it over now. We don't need it for the reclining pigeon, right? It was uh, something that was there on the left side, but we don't need that. Uh, but when you do put that right foot to the left knee, and you're maybe approaching it from this different, tiny bit different, uh, the knees to the chest to start, you know, notice if that right knee is really going close to your body, if it's not able to really motion open. And if it's tight, then put the left foot on the flooring and then let that right knee move out. Now I'm focusing on having to pull your knees in, maybe every time you do this, feeling the opportunities internally and then structurally. That's what I was kind of talking about in the beginning of the session was, you know, the uh, feeling the attention that's pulled to the surface muscles. That's what I always find interesting, how you go past that uh, deeper, okay? So as I hold the back of that left leg and squeeze in for a few more moments, feel the purpose into your hip. Hip purpose, purposeful hips. Breathing, emptying the lungs. Okay, now lower down the left foot, left leg, and then cross the right leg over to the left. Add a ball, add the sand, find what might be helpful for you to adapt to your, your core zone. We've had a lot of this centerpiece of the body um, and the hips is a major focus. So when the arm opens on that right side and the ball is maybe at sacrum, you wanna feel how the waistband has this openness towards the sky. And maybe your head rolls to the right. Perhaps you stay right in the center with your brain. It's tempting to let your eyes close. And as you continue that process of closing them, alternating that position in the eyes, stem to the brain, you know, you might get a little bit sleepy and at least calm the nervous system. So centering the breath. Now feel if that right leg needs to slide down a little bit or if taking it across and up is better for you. So sometimes um, that's a good question is the angle of the leg. When we have the leg in the belt, it's a little more obvious we cross over and we can go a little downstream to get some support in our back. But here it's the whole glom of the, the connection of the whole lever at the top of the lever through the whole leg. So it's really not the same isolated activity. So feel right here how your lever from your hip into your leg, like just kind of think about that's an attachment, right? If you're looking at a skeleton. So in the next moments, we're gonna actually come around and start to work with the full body and the final part. Wants to get symmetrical as we can, full body patterns, strengthening too. So, you know, feel this, this side motion. And then taking the ball away and the sand. And as the legs are going to travel you upright, you choose. I mean, some of us are going to find, of course, we're going to scoop our knees into the chest. This is the most harmonious 
um, tactic out of that position. But if you decide you want to roll through the spine and to the pelvic back, right to the back of the pelvis up to sitting, go for it, okay? If you want to find these searching how to get to crawling, even though you might not find that you can accomplish that somehow, try that too. You might roll to the side and then just kind of get a feel of trying to get up and around and then getting your blanket on the center of your mat or not sort of right at the center, but at the mat so that you can put your knees onto that blanket. And I want you to stretch out your wrist for the first little few moments here. So put your bolster straight out in front across the mat and then turn the fingers back so that you have the hands positioned so the fingers face back and the heels of the hands maybe are down. Now, if this is a really intense pattern for your wrists, you might have your hands um, stretching open for a moment like so, palms turning out and let your hips stretch back and then try coming back into this. It's not required, you have to stay for a disciplined time. And if it hurts, then you'll pass, you'll pose pass, okay? But feel the knees open and then motion your spine so you have a rounding back into that cat shape. And then take your front paws, your hands to turn the fingers back forward, turn your nails forwards, okay? And then reach your hips back without touching towards your heels or even getting that angle. But feel that stretch open through your back channel, your head tilting down. Okay, now when you look back to your, where your legs are, what I want you to focus on when you come up to table-ish or somewhere you feel like you're on all fours, find the position where you're not quite crushing into the heels of your hands. That sounds a little bit traumatic, but you know how when you go forward, it's almost like there's a cutoff at your connection in your core if you're kind of jamming your weight into your palms. So what we're gonna play with is the knees are together and you're gonna tilt back and then you're gonna move up and tuck your knee in towards your forehead. So you have to scoop in your chin and then bring your knee back down and change sides. We're gonna take it real simple to start. Knee tuck in and then the knee comes back down. So squeeze and round your back. So chin in, so that's a squeeze. And then the leg comes down. And then play with it so that you can get a little more dynamic, meaning you lift the leg back and up and you arch the back. And then you tuck the knee in and then come down. So the full cycle, let's go to the right side, is the right leg is back. And then the knee touches in towards the forward, so you fully scoop the back. The right leg stretches back and up. Waist tries to stretch and the knee comes down. Does that make some sense? Okay, so leg reaches back and up. This could be the arched back position. And then your chin or your head really ro rotates in towards your knee tucking. And then last motion, the leg swings back and up. And then the knees come back together. So as we come forward, I want you to let your body weight move into that up dog. So the hands on floor wide and the hips moving down and lifting through the heart in breath. And then as you move back through the hip bones, stretch your tail back and let the hands stand out very wide on the mat and your head touches down. So feeling that reach without having to lift your knees off the floor, feel the back open. Okay, now let's take the body weight back center and bring the right arm straight forward in the middle and the left arm is going to swipe under the right arm. You're going to stretch your shoulders. So you're going to reach your hips back still and work with this crossover. Now you can turn your head to the left. You can also turn your head to the right and have your head on the floor. This seems to be the preferred range, right? So my right arm is forward, left arm swings, under, so it's really going right under my right armpit. And then my head to the right side of the head. Oh, you should likely feel this a lot through your shoulder. 
Now, I would avoid pushing into your, your hands very much here. See if you can use the blood flow in the shoulders to condition the circulation into the back of the lungs. Okay. Now, coming up, you're going to switch. So left arm forward, right arm leaves under. And now, of course, if you turn your head to the left, right side of your head down, you will likely feel right that arch in the spine and it really drops towards the brain. So it's moving towards this inverted pattern coming up. Unusual sequence, but everything's kind of going together nicely. Hopefully. So get the feel now as you unwind to that right arm, hands pressing. Why not use your bolster a little bit here? So let's take our bolster. And so it's right spine wise underneath your core. Move your waist forward so you're lying on your bolster. Oh, feels good. So get kind of cozy, elbows down, hands open and feel your body kind of wag a little side to side. You know, noticing this whole core range, okay? And then feeling the extremity. So take a moment um, and kind of visualize, you know, kind of starfish vis visualization, um, how the extremities really do come back to that core, you know, spiral that goes out from the mid body. So, you know, if you're jamming your pelvis down, I want you to relax the buttocks so you're not trying to force and press. You want to feel comfortable in the tummy. Okay. And now let the hands slide back so your elbows are by your sides and lift up the heart. And so this is a baby back bend locus. So there's no focus of me trying to force my hands down further. So I want you to feel the spine's natural strength. It can feel very limited, right? If you crawled kind of fast in life, maybe you, you didn't do a lot of these baby back bends. So I guess we'll do them now, okay. Feel the feet apart. That's gonna help your the, the, radi the radiating movement out from the navel area, even if this is not your navel in the back, but it's that kind of reaching out from the center, the starfish idea. And then as you reach open your palms, we're going to change that motion, moving the heart centered up and then toes under. Really hook the toes and then move back your hips so you're pretty wide with the knees. Lift up the knees and alternate bending them and walking your dogs here. Yeah, basically that's what's up. Walking out your dogs. Feel the knee generating movement and how that sways the knee forward and then the opposite heel goes back. So it's really pretty darn complex, right? All the places that we have to attach focus to in one moment with our movement psychology. But I want you to try walking your hands back once the feet get still. And then have your feet slide up the toes up on top of the blanket so your heels are off the back and your toes are up on your blanket. Stretch your calves. And then let your spine center down, your head lowers down. Yeah, if you need to wag your tail a little bit, it feels kind of fun with the toes up on the blanket to get some movement. And I want to give you a little heads up. We're going to do pigeon pretty soon. So, I want you to feel this whole back flap of the leg all the way up to the sitting bone space that that area is able to open and even moving your hips a little side to side. Not necessarily bending your knees, but just letting them swing a little side to side can help open up this, this lane of travel in the back towards the back of the hip. So let the brain sway down. If you are concerned about the blood pressure and you don't want to go this far, then what I recommend is that you might have something in 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 the middle, so the hands could be above the knees, and you could get a little bit more control, right, of the blood pressure. So that's an option if you're getting a little unsettled right now. And as you start to move your head to a little bit of a lift, 
We're going to slide the feet off the blanket for those of us on it. And then walk your palms back forward. And let's take our feet so they kind of slide back. And when the knees approach coming down, you're going to have your bolster and push it far front. So it's still, it could be actually horizontal or, or, <clears throat> or vertical forward. It could be either. But you're going to slide your right knee forward, pointing the knee open to your right hand, and then guide your left side back. So your blanket might be under your left knee, and it might not be under your knee. It might be under the front, the top of the thigh. So reach that left thigh back. I know this is a little more intense than we're used to because the bolster is not under our pelvis. So if that's too much for you, add your second blanket under your thigh or sit on the two blankets. You can do that as well. So I'm going to give this as the first option. I lean forward and down. And I bring my elbows down and I place my forehead onto the bolster. Okay, if you have a little space, you can push your bolster forward. And I'll give a, a little tutorial of the blanket change. So if you decide you want your two blankets, you'll take those just like you would, it, the same height as a bolster, right? It's not that much lower, although it's compressible, right? And then I would use that like I would my bolster, same thing. It's kind of nice to have. I have to admit, I do like the two blankets for this. Um, I've adapted to that. So as that right knee is open, let the focus be that the knee is a little open versus the knee is hooked up too high. So I want you to try to get that right foot to flex a little bit. And then if you don't want to use the bolster like this, you can have the bolster across and put your elbows on top of it, which is Kind of a nice leverage in your hip. It's different. It's a hip intensity that's not quite the same when your upper body has to lift. But the left foot can be relaxed or hooked under. I'm going to guide some moments of pure energy into the right buttock. Back knee can bend. Moving the heel towards your seat. Maybe give that a try. Good. Breathing through the front and the back lungs. Now, when we start to come back to the center of shifting to the left leg, we're going to stay with the seated position. This might give you an opportunity to change up your blankets if you want to add or remove. So when we let our body weight move right, I want you to bring your left leg forward. And you might put your foot on the bolster and kind of tilt a little bit. Sometimes that's nice to do. Just anything that's organic that happens to be in the way can be used. Not used against you, but for you, right? This can be like, oh, this is kind of an against me position with the bolster, but it's, it's actually generating in my hip. And then I just let my foot lower down and then I swing the right leg back and it just kind of changes it up. Now this left leg has had a little promotion. And then as I stretch back, be curious, especially these little kind of mildly challenging poses um, for particular spots. Maybe you wander into it and shift side to side, but carefully feel where your upper body can be in a centered space. You know, this bolster across might work for you. It might be better if you have a bolster so it's straight in front so you can kind of hug it. Really, you don't have to use a bolster. You can have it so it's not even part of your pose away. But with that arch, if it's tempting for you to lift up more and you want to use that bolster as support, I would try to keep the hands really wide 
so that the pressure in your back is not so um, so um, centralized in the channel of your lumbar spine, right? So if I'm down on my elbows, if I'm down on my left on my elbows, you might notice the um, broadness behind the heart and even feel when you breathe in that space can get a little bit plus, right? It can increase. So kind of feel that. And then of course the the weight of your your lower abdomen, that area just letting it be centered is really helpful. So the forward motion. So feeling when the spine is moving in. And the brain is moving forwards. You know, those that want to stay longer in pigeon, you're welcome to, okay, to lengthen your pigeon, pigeoneering time. And those that are feeling like you can start to shift, we're going to do a, a short series of forward bends to complete. So I want you to feel. Of course, I can't make you feel something, but that there is a little bit of hip pressure just that we pushed off of. So move your right leg back out. Actually, what did we do last time? We put the foot on the bolster to kind of go in between. So take that moment if you use that. We're going to set up for uh, Upavista Kanasana, and then we'll do um, bolster bench. Or if you want to do legs up the wall, you can. But Upa Vista will be a nice kind of um, surge of circulation in the adductors, the lymph collectors. So get that right leg out, left leg out. And if you can sit on one blanket, I would encourage you to try that little lower height for this one. And have your bolster in front straight forward, like you know how we do this kind of thing, we've all been in these sessions with that, you might find that that's a good setup, but we want a block that's across horizontal under your bolster. And this way you can add another blanket, right, on top. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can have the bolster this way and lean forward, forehead down, okay? You can also have the bolster with the block on the other side so it tilts up. You get a little seesaw here. And then you can go forward and hug the bolster and be down. Okay. So it's nice to have this one where you don't have any lenses on. And you can actually relax your forehead onto that support. Okay. Now, if it's too low for your hips and your knees are shaky, and it's just too much flexibility work to do that. You can sit on another blanket, right? That's the reason why you'd want many uh, blankets or another bolster. So let's say you had two bolsters. You have the round bolster and the flat. You can sit on the flat for this one. Use the round bolster in front of you. So that's a benefit of the bolster double. When you lean down, either way you have the bolster on the block at the other end or closer to you, you're going to lower your forehead and center your legs. Center the pelvis, right? And center of the legs. Your hands could be forwards. You could be holding the bolster or the blanket on top. But get the feel of the spine lengthening. You know, notice how the forward bend can be a very calming tradition for the brain to surrender. So when you do come up, we're going to take a position of our back on the floor, have your bolster on two blocks so they're pretty high up. 
with the setting or the mid to the high height. Yeah, and if you're if you're tallish, you can probably go with the high height. It just depends on your leg length so you don't fall off of your bolster. But we have our blanket on top of the bolster, and then we bring our legs up. If you want to swallow your legs on with a blanket, you can do that just as well. But scoot your seat. Your back is pretty ripe from the last pose for that stretch. So you likely want to have a blanket under your spine. It's already been opened up. And then as I lower back, I have my sand offering for my ribs. I'm going to center my pelvic layer to relax it. So that's going to feel like this movement of the knees is calming to the back of the pelvis. And if you add any props, like your sand, it might go from heart to belly, it might go across the ribs. What is ever truly comfortable for the spine is where you might choose. Choose comfortable spine. <laughs> and it might not be the spine, but the back order of things. And let the heels float and the brain center back so you can finally steer your mind into letting go. Intentionally positioning the mind to surrender. In these last two poses, they have had the opportunity to let the brain have that symmetrical position, but it's not a place where you feel like there's necessarily right or left side of the brain in your daily habits, right? It's, it's all together, right? You can't really dissect that in your habits. So when you're breathing, feel that source of equilibrium when you draw the air in. It might feel like it draws into your head, but it draws into your lungs. And then as you exhale, let the mouth relax, let the body empty. That's something you can sometimes control in this moment is the movement of the breath. So fully emptying the lungs, much as you can control. Feel the shoulders as they're centered back. Search for any areas that can let go, whether physical or mental. And then finally, exhale as fully as you can, all the way to the end. Now, if you have a sandbag on you, you're going to slide that away. And when the legs are positioned on top, you might bring your heels to the edge of that blanket and then feel as you move your knees in this position. If you have a blanket under your whole spine, you likely want to keep it so that you'll roll to the side to come up. If your blanket's under your head only, you could tuck your knees in. So you make that call when you shift your knees side to side and then you feel that column of the spine work its way to moving up which can feel as if it's supporting you or it's like we we had in the beginning we had this position where our feet were apart and we kind of leaned a little forward so give that moment of your spinal column motioning and then if you're sitting on a blanket Come upright and crossing at your unnatural crossing, unless you have an injury for creating that. And then feel when the knees are supposedly moving down. They might be a little bit bouncy. 
Lift your hands up and guide the palms to unity and find where your gaze can be inside, maybe not inside uh, a brain, but inside towards the heart center. Closing your eyes and gather your attention to 